Hello, race fans. Um, yeah, back, back from holiday. And um, I know I've not posted anything for quite a while. That was one of my earlier race cars. Um, but yes, I'm back, back off annual leave, back off holiday. Really needed a break. Had a couple of nights in London, then a week in Devon with the kids. And it was amazing weather. And uh, had, a, had a great time, managed to switch off a bit. However, never really switch off. I mean, we had some positive results. I set my eBay store to being away during that period to give myself, well, A, because we just started processing and listing some items before we went away after a long period of actually not doing too much on it. Um, and so I wanted to see if they would sell and we did, we had five orders, which isn't a huge amount, but they're all big ticket items. They're all, this, this monitor has sold for 350 quid. These two Nvidia Shield things, these uh, these two Nvidia Shields um, have sold for you know decent money. They're both working. These are these are all from the pallets that I've still got out there. Um, this monitor was 600, 600 circa. It was a, it's a big graphic design monitor that flips on its end. It's like six hundred five fifty new actually now, um, uh, and it is brand new and it works fine. It's got a tiny little mark on the front, and that sold for three seven five, which I'm super pleased about. Those have sold for about 130 each. Um, again, fully working. I don't know why they were returned. Um, they're all empty Apple boxes, by the way. They haven't got devices in. Um, and another couple of items that we've sold. Uh, headphones for 120 quid and a hard drive, an SSD hard drive for something else. And uh, I think that was it. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five items. So I'm going to ship those today. A uh, bit of a hiccup, though, because I set... Oh, yeah, we got a blister from Cartin. Went karting, I absolutely kicked ass, won both races um, by far. In fact, lapped a field. Anyway, I go off on a tangent. I set my eBay store to being away for the period to buy myself some, some much needed time, but also sell the items as well. So I was quite pleased with that. However, I did, uh, uh, interestingly, one of the NVIDIA display TV things sold and the chap messaged me. Uh, he wasn't being impatient by no means, um, you know, and the chap messaged me saying, oh, when's it being shipped? And, um, I'm like, oh, well, eBay, you know, comes up everywhere saying this is, this store is on holiday for so-and-so. It won't be shipped until after the 28th, 29th, whatever it is. Um, and it was cool with that. No problem. I didn't hear back, actually. But I got in this morning, had a look at the list of the orders, and the bottom one said, they all said, you know, due to be dispatched today. The bottom one said, should have been dispatched on the 19th. I was like, oh, no, there goes my accelerating. Um, and no wonder he asked. So I rang eBay immediately and said, look, I set it to go from the 14th to 28th. And on the 16th, when they purchased something, obviously it's, it's somehow missed it. And they're like, oh yeah, I can see that. There's no problem, we'll rectify that. Reach out to the customer. I said, yeah, because I'm going to get a bit of a kick in for this. So I reached out to the customer and he was amazing. So I'm really pleased. Um, Mark, great. Thank you so much um, for the, the leeway. And, uh, you know, eBay have kind of covered it off. So uh, danger averted. So they're, they're all going out today. And I think that lot was 350 to was about seven, 700 pounds worth of stuff. So that's quite nice ticking over. But as always, um, it all kicked off um, in a nice way, in a positive way. But you can guarantee it, as soon as I go on holiday, set my auto autoresponder for please don't email me. Yeah, lo and behold, Bosch, out of nowhere, BBC Radio 4, who had interviewed or, you know, were talking to the chap that I know at B-Stock, uh, who reached out to me after the Wired interview, the Wired magazine interview, and he reached out to me and said, look, Radio 4, this this Wednesday, wants to do an interview with me and you about these customer tow lots. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll talk to the wife. Um, I'm supposed to be on holiday, but I don't want to pass that sort of that sort of opportunity out. So, yeah, sure enough, lined it all up, had a test call on Tuesday, and then went live at 12, I think it was about 12.45, from the beach in Devon in incredibly hot weather. Um, I did a, a very short slot on Radio 4, um, which I will now dub in, but uh, it's an incredible experience. Well, last year we spent £110 billion on stuff online. That's 46% more than in 2019. So brilliant. You press go, you sit by the front door and mostly what you want is delivered to you. But have you ever wondered what happens to the goods 
that you return. In the first three months of this year alone, about six million items worth nearly two and a half billion pounds were returned. But they don't get thrown away. Some retailers resell your unwanted and returned stuff to other businesses who then sell it on again. And there is a huge market for it. Neil Barker left his career as a Formula One mechanic to set up a business repairing tech goods. And since the pandemic, he's been buying returned stuff to sell on. And Giorgio Vitale is from B Stock. They buy and sell returned goods to businesses across the world on their auction site. Giorgio, let me go to you first. You're a bit like eBay for businesses, aren't you? So how exactly does it work? That, that's correct. Yeah, B-Stock is the, is the largest online B2B re-commerce platform. And if you consider eBay no different to an online auction, we sell pallets and full truckloads of consumer return and overstock inventories for our retail partners across the UK, Europe and, and globally. Where do you get it from? Where does it come into you from? Yeah, so from from a from a from a consumer, you know, from if you think of the supply chain, um, as you mentioned, you know, someone buys a product and they return it, it will go back into a supply chain, it will therefore go to a, a warehouse, and those products are consolidated. And once that data is available, we then promote that inventory online to our to our buyers. So the inventory can be can be placed across numerous locations. So say I buy a toaster and then think, oh no, I don't want that toaster, it's pink. I just send it back to the manufacturer or I send it back to the retailer where I bought it. And do they not just sell it on straight away to someone like me? Why does it get to you? Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. And if you think of you know, the, the sheer volume of products that are being now sold online, when you think of a retailer that's receiving return products, there's, there's processes around grading and categorising that product. So if we take the toaster, for example, the retailer would need to test it they will need to make sure it's fully functional and mm. grade it before it could be resold. And that's where we come into place. We can help them very quickly grade that product and get it back out into the market as quickly as possible. Uh, so you take the pain away from the bit that doesn't quite that's work, which is me sending it back. Exactly, exactly that. We do take the pain away. And, and more, more so, this is, um, this is a new way of addressing sustainability initiatives for these retailers. Yeah. The resale market is exploding and it's showing no signs of slowing down. Well, it certainly exploded for Neil Barker. Um, you, were a, you were knocking around with David Coulthard as a, as a mechanic in Formula One. So how did you get into buying and selling return goods? I was indeed, yep. Um, no, I... As you said, my consumer tech repair company has been doing really well. And um, it kind of, the, the Apple products took me out, out of F1. And uh, yeah, I was, it was something that I'm um, a bit of an avid YouTube watcher and like to, uh, I think it just came up on some of my feeds a couple of years ago. And it's something that I'd like to do. I love trying new things. I love trying to see if it will work or not. And um, yeah, sure enough, over the Christmas of 19, I think the gap between uh, Christmas and New Year, I thought, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's uh, go on Google, see if I can find where I can buy them from, and found B-Stock, and uh, the rest is uh, in history. I, I so you thought, on... you thought, I know, I'll start with a four pallets of robot <laughs> vacuum cleaners. I, it, uh, it hooked me. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's, you've got to have confidence in your ability to do that. How did the robot vacuum cleaners go? Oh, superbly well, superbly well. I mean, first of all, the you know the, the tech in the in the vacuum cleaners just hooked me. I'm like, I love that. If it means I don't have to hoover the house or anything, it's all over. I'm all over it. So, I thought, you know, that you know, seriously, I looked into it and thought, uh, yeah, I can turn even if I can fix one out of make you know one out of three or so and so forth, and let's get them in it. And it went really well. Who bought they, them? Most of them were working. Who who bought them? I uh, I used eBay primarily and um and just i think i saturated uh, the market that half of the year in, in lockdown with vacuum cleaners the robot vacuums yeah everybody anybody so and what what hasn't worked so well when you've thought i know i'm going to sell a pallet of this the only the i mean last year i bought i stuck with tech to start with on an enormous lorry load after the first four pallets went so well um, towards the end of last year, I tried a few different genres of goods, facial and personal care items that were returned. They didn't do quite so well, but again, it's some lessons learned. And I bought some clothes that I thought wouldn't do well, but actually did really well. Well, let me go to Giorgio. And Neil, thank you, because I know you're on holiday and you're talking to us no from problem. the beach. Um, but let me go to Giorgio. <laughs> Is there ever a restriction on who you can sell the products to once you've got hold of them? 
Yeah, it really it really depends. It really depends on the category and it depends on the retailer. Um, so again, you know, we have we have resale restrictions in place for some you know some of our partners where they'll prefer products to be resold in certain you know geographies and also you know again around consumer electronics there are requirements um, to ensure products are fully data cleansed for example yeah. so they're safe to go back into the secondary market so it really it really does depend on on the category and the brand and if you buy a load of t-shirts let's say because you heard neil say that clothes are a big seller for him and you buy them from a particular Bland, brand. Can you add your own stuff, your own stickers or embroider them in a slightly different way? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, apparel, apparel, clothing, you know, accessories and footwear is a huge, it's a huge market. And, and those buyers, as long as they operate within those resale requirements, they can, they can remarket those products any way they wish. As Neil mentioned, we have many, many sellers that will uh, use eBay, they'll have their own stores, they'll use market stores, you know, pop-up shops. So they have a whole way, a whole, you know, a whole mechanism to resell this product. So you don't start trampling on copyright or trademarks? No, I mean, again, it depends. It depends on the brand. I mean, again, the it all you know the, the customers they can they can resell that product as long as they're within those resale restrictions Giorgio Vitali and Neil Barker from the beach thanks so much what do you think uh short and sweet uh I was it was an interesting process very interesting process they on the Tuesday they called me up to test um to discuss it with me and make sure it's all good and then Wednesday morning at 10 they called me to make sure that the line was okay and then um, 20 past 12, they called me up and you can actually, so I'm laying in this beach tent um, with my earphones in going, well, it's actually, it's a busy beach, but it's actually quite quiet. And they're like, right, okay, Neil, no problem, speak to you. I can hear the radio show going on in my ears, um, but I'm muted. So I'm like, no problem. So I can hear the radio show and they're talking about the, 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 the bit before and they're saying, look, if we lose the connection to this, the interview that we've got with the chap in Warwick, then we'll come straight to you guys. So be ready. I'm like, no problem. And then 10 minutes later, somebody else came back on and said, Neil, you still there? Yeah, great, no problem. I'm the producer's on. So said, we'll be lining you up soon. And then you can hear the show and the show, ah, right. And they changed subject onto yours. I'm like, oh, whoa. starting to get a little bit nervous now. And they interview, um, you know, discussing it and they're leading in. And oh, just as soon as they kind of go, right, let's talk about these pallets, um, the dog with the family behind us on the beach started barking. I'm like, no. So I get up and I'm like, I need to find somewhere quiet. I can't walk up the beach where it's quieter because the wind is is rustling. So I'm working down the beach and every dog literally across from where I'm, like dog, 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 dog. So I'm trying to walk while listening to the what was going on the show while trying to get away from these dogs. Um, and in the end, I saved my peace. But I, I came off of it and it was a snap, done. And I'm like, wow. And the experience that I had was, was that, I mean, it was a fantastic experience. I was absolutely kicking my own backside because I didn't manage to plug me on my YouTube channel or even Spark Angels, which is obviously the company that they're talking about, the tech repair firm that I have. Um, and in my mind, I'm like, Let, let's get something out of this more than the experience, because that's what you do. And, you know, Giorgio was fantastic straight in there with B-top, uh, B-Stop Plug. And by no means am I affiliated with them. I'm just a willing customer, happy to, to you know, discuss what I do and the fact that I buy from them. And so, yeah, sure enough, I was gutted that I didn't plug it, but what I did take from that was the experience. The fact that, you know, it, it was all new to me. The, you know, you got the producers talking to you and the this and you go, and then, you know, the fact that you don't have a lot of time and it was bish bash bosh done. So yeah, it was a fantastic learning experience. And I think there's may, way more of that to come. Uh, like and subscribe, do all those sort of things. I will catch up with you soon. Thank you very much.